Welcome to the show for bloody good Kiwis across the country. This is Booja with Lee Han and Jason Hoyt. Oh, good day, New Zealand. Great to have your company this Wednesday afternoon. It's the 18th of April 2018. Hope you're having a good day out there, Lee Han. Good day, mate. Yeah, get it, mate. Sorry, just tuning the guitar here in the yeah, background. Yeah, sounded good. Sounded good. A bit annoying, isn't it, really? Oh, no, it's all right. Most top radio DJs would have tuned the guitar up, or top muse those, actually, before the gig started. But I didn't have time, as, as you can tell. Well, actually, Matt was saying uh, just before we went to, uh, well, before you arrived, actually, he loves how you tune your guitar and sing songs for the hour before the show. Yeah. Um, when you sit there, it's just great. I mean, it gets us into the vibe of it the does. show. It does. You know, it pumps us up. It's, we're ready to go, you know what I mean? So I'm expecting an amazing name that tune tonight. Yeah, I'm going to do something a little bit... Uh, who knows? You might be able to play it out. It's it's a, it's it's a, it's an oldie. Yeah, nice. But it's a classic. Good stuff, mate. Hey, don't forget, of course, being a Wednesday, we've got the KFC Wheel of Chicken around five twenty. Don't we, Matt? How are you, Lobos? We certainly not do. You? Thanks. Good, thanks, Jace. Very well. Breaking D- necks, cash and checks. You know how it is. Yeah, good on you, mate. Speaking of um, the KFC Wheel of Chicken, I just oh, see I a bit of a. Hello, 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 hello. Bit of an there of some of some KFC. Oh, is it? Ca- I thought new you were doing burgers. Else. I think some new burgers. Oh, some new burgers. Some chicken is it? Ca- chicken mozzarella burgers. I think. Oh, very nice and beautiful, good. beautiful. Hey, also throughout the show, we'll be taking uh, uh, text on three four eight three. If you've got a mate. A family member, whatever, that doesn't listen to Boucher, send us their number. We want to give them a call because we've made a conscious decision to convert Boucher listeners, one listener at a time, Lee Hart. That's right. And, uh, you know, some people feel feel like you have to change the world, the planet. Can, sorry, Jason, interrupt interrupted you. That's right. That could be our new slogan. We had Mike Lane in here before. Maybe we need a new slogan. Boucher, one listener, one listener at a time. Yeah, mate. What do you think? Something like that? Something like that? Well, you know, I'll be honest with you. Like when I go to my mechanics, for example, I say to them, what are you listening to? What radio station? And they go, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I go, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You've got to listen to Hodecky. Uh, if I go to the supermarket, I say to them, what's that music you're playing over there? What station? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. You've got to be putting Hodecky on. I tell you what, it's amazingly effective at the fruit shop. What's that music you're playing? No, no. Radio Hodecky's yeah, the I way to you go. Made your point there, Jeff. Oh, yeah. I make my point? Do you reckon once you leave, they go, oh, all right, that dickie's gone. We can put it back to the. Yeah, they probably do, to be fair. Spotify. Probably do. Mm. Uh, but I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's get into what? Oh, a bit of Green Day and uh, hoe into these burgers, shall we? Yeah. Oh, I tell you what, Lee Hart, I've been hoeing into the sticky wicked wings. And yeah. boy, oh boy, good times, good times. You've already had four, Matt. You've yeah. had four. How long was that song? Two minutes fifty. Two minutes fifty. Well, what I did is—it's long enough to eat a chicken mozzarella burger. Yeah, you you did very well. What you do is you pelican it. You don't chew. Mm. Is that does that come from the fact that you came from a large family of boys? Because I've heard those stories. You know, when you've got lots of boys to feed, that the food goes very very quickly indeed, mm. and you've got to sort of hoe into it very quickly, otherwise it disappears. Don't eat quick. You don't eat, Jace. Yeah, fair call, mate. Fair call. I was waiting for my host, my other my other host, to come back. He's really is hoeing into those sticky wicked wings. a story. I just had to. Uh, Woo! There you go. They're Ooh. good, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Speaking of the gym, who was speaking of the gym? No, oh. one, no one mentioned the gym at all. Oh. I kind of wish you hadn't brought it up. Be honest. Uh, have you guys? Have you? Have you noticed a change in my body? Mm. No. Oh, you kind okay. of muffin topping those jeans. Oh, Matt. True story. Much to my absolute shame and chagrin, on the. Uh, no, not the loser cruiser. You on the CrossFit? No, not on the CrossFit. Cross you know, the, the, the snow cross- machine. No, you know the running treadmill, one. The treadmill. treadmill. I'm on the treadmill. Packed gym. I had my trackies on, not my daggy. I, I mean, I've got some pretty amazing trackies, but don't judge my trackies. That's my Matt. first red flag. And I had the zip down a little bit on one of them, and I was running on the treadmill without a word of a lie. I got my foot caught in my tracky pants. Went down on my knees in front of everyone and got ejected off the treadmill in front of about 50 punters. Yep. And you I don't know what you... Uh, there's nothing you can do in that situation, but anyone was like, oh, my God, are you all... Because it was, looked quite meaty, you apparently. Could, you could not wear The only thing you can gym. do, Jace, the only thing you can do that's positive is to go straight to the, the owners of the gym, ask for the security footage of it, and put it up on YouTube and get some, make some money out of it. Well, actually, what I did was as soon as I got flung to the floor, instead of looking like I, you know it was all a mistake and stuff, I did twenty press ups. 
Like yeah. it was all part of my routine. But absolute humiliation. That was probably the voice. hardest part of it, was it? Yeah. How many press ups can you do? 100. Oh. <laughs> I'll do it next break, man. Okay, I want, I want to see you do a hunt, and I'll get Tom to film it. What you need is some um, tear away trackies. So that if they get caught, they just whip straight off. I tell you, I had this gr- neat pair of trackies that you used to have the zips around the thigh area so you could unzip the thighs and take them off and they'd turn into shorts. How good is that? Hey, eh? hello! And they had about 10 pockets in them. It was good stuff. Have you been on drugs today? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, that's all right. I'm just going to go into my wicked wing now. Carry on. Here's Salmonella Dub. Lee Hart, Jason Voice, and the Bujar Hawk. Till 7 tonight on Radio Hodaki. Can I get a good old get a to the boys in the workshop at Dargaville Honda from the best workmate, Renee? There you go, get Renee. Mad. Get a mad. Nice to have your company. Now, look, we've got a pretty hectic show from what I can gather here on the log. Yeah. A lot of giveaways, a lot of cash, a lot of prizes, and a lot of big topics of the day. Now, look here. Apparently, uh, new research has come out that said music activates specific parts of the brain. Yep, I've heard that for sure. And they did research that was done on cats, apparently. I, I, I don't understand that. Why wouldn't they do that research on, on humans? It was cheaper, I suppose, to do it on cats. Yeah, and I, and I imagine it would actually be very hard to gauge what a cat's reaction to music was. I mean, obviously, if they didn't like it, it would be pretty obvious, but how do you know if they like well, it? Well, I think it's on the brain waves in, in its brain. Right, okay. But maybe maybe with cats, they're not getting memories like we would be getting, and we could you could get false readings from the music, where if it's just music on cats, they're, they're just hearing the music as music and not from... They're not thinking of a past relationship when they hear that song or something. Right, it? yeah, I know what you're saying. But isn't the whole the whole sort of joy of music about the memories and the things that sparks in your brain? I mean, that's what they should be finding out yeah, about. Yeah, maybe that's right. But, you know, when you hear a song for the very... Maybe the research was about you hear it, uh, some chords in a certain order for the very first time and it resonates inside your brain in some way. Right. Is that when you've heard the song before? Is that when you're on ecstasy? Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, cats... Yeah, it seems weird to me. I don't know how you read what a cat's brain waves are doing. I mean, you know, unless they start purring or something. But, you mm. know, I hear certain songs or whatever, and they trigger, you know, memories for me. Um, sad good, stuff. Well, sad stuff, depressing. good stuff, making love for the first time, all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's, for me, what music is about, what it, what it makes you feel, Lee Hart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where was that research done, by the way? At Huntley. Oh, okay. Well, that explains a lot then. If it was done in Huntley. Yeah. Well, that's my... That's that's all from the science corner today, Jase. Have you got anything scientific before we move on? Well, one of the questions I wanted to ask you today in terms of what we're doing for the show, isn't this our seed special? Where we talk about the nutritional values of various seeds that you can eat and so forth and put into your diet? Was that tomorrow? I think I got axed. Oh, I did it? The seed special? Yeah, we, we, we put it forward as an option. And um, they said, "Look, just park that for now. Just, just do a straight normal show." But I'm, I'm open to it. Mm, okay. I thought, I thought you were going to talk about hydroponics. Oh, I mean, we, I mean, I was going to sort of segue into hydroponics from the seeds. From the seeds. But that I thought sense, initially, yeah. you know, things like sunflower seeds, great for the thyroid, for example. Uh, stuff like that, pumpkin seeds, great for your complexion. Mm-hmm. You know that sort of thing. It's the sort of stuff that the listeners love to learn about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. maybe after five, we'll do a bit of seed chat. Um, apple seeds great for the sphincter. Is it? Yep. Is that why you always eat the core? Yeah. <laughs> Here's royal blood. You two there on uh, Daily Boucher this Wednesday afternoon. It's great to have your company. Keep those texts rolling in, by the way, on yep. 3483. And, uh, Lee, you're a bit fired up, aren't you, buddy? No, not really. I just think we should focus on a couple here, whereas um, mainly positive of this issue, isn't it? Um, we're often asking how we can get uh, more listeners, this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And um, some guy has said, you know how to get more listeners? Stream George. It's nothing personal, Lee. It's just your voice and sense of humour. So, well, that's kind of personal. Well, well you're mentioning a bit personal. Mentioning two flaws in my in my life. Um, I think you've got a great voice. Well, it doesn't matter, but he doesn't. That's the main thing. He's the he's the right. He's in the right. So that's how we can get better. So I said, go listen to George then, or Matt did, 
And he says, I would, but it's not my radio on site. So he obviously hasn't got the power within his company to go and change that. He must be the coffee guy or something. And, and way, um, way to wear the pants stick here. And he goes, just shut up and play some music. It's the only good part of your show. Well, I won't argue with that. It's bloody good music. God, there's some amazing music on this show. Some bloody good music on the show. Speaking of which, I think we've got a bit of Green Day and some um, Red Hot yeah. Chilies after five. So then I said, start your own radio show, dickhead. Right. right. Yes, and I he doesn't that. want to do that because he's working with a team. Um, but funny enough, he is listening to the show. Obviously, everyone else wonder where it is because I love to do a shout out to the other guys at the workplace who are listening to the show. Yeah, good stuff. So mate. he's not really listening; he's just texting in. So I'd argue whatever job he's doing, he's not doing a very good job of it because he's texting a radio show he doesn't like at the job he's at. Tell me, this is this is yeah, absolutely. This, this what is, is absolute this, knob cheese? This is. <laughs> Something that's always intrigued me. You know when you're, you're selling something, right? Yeah. The customer's always right. So when someone says, you know, something offensive like, why don't you go and jump off a blah, blah, yeah. blah, you, I, sh I hate you so much, your show is blah, 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 blah. Is that customer therefore by default rightly, Hart? Well, there you go. Do I need to take that on board and go, okay, well, that's I'll just right. go and jump off a bridge then? But then you get another text that or another text says, loving the show, is he the idiot? You yeah, just don't know who's well, it's right all, now. It's all subjective, isn't it? It's very subjective. My point is, he's obviously in a job where he's got no power or control. They obviously probably take the piss out of him um, during the day. He said, oh, can we change the station? And they're, they're probably workplace bullying him because he's like a bit of a wuss and stuff. He can't change it. And that frustrates him. So he has to text into the show. Right. Yeah. Should we give him a prize? Yeah, I think we should give him a prize. We should give him a call. Oh, we should give him a, a call. We and, should give him a call. And then give him a prize. Hey, incidentally, just on the seed chat, someone's texted in and said, Poppy Seed Tea is a very good brew, mm. apparently. And you know how your brother was in the other day, is saying Poppy Seeds are an opiate. So I'm mm. wondering if it's some kind of hallucinatory you Well, maybe you've had Poppy Seed tea. tea before you did the drug test. Oh, here we go. Some guy says, don't listen to that tool. Bougie boys are ace and neat. I like that. Oh, we should give this guy a call at some point, though. But you think that's pretty clever, don't you, boy? Don't Radio hit there. An oldie bit of goodie, Lee Hart. Yeah. Not a bad tune, that one. Now, this Friday, Saturday and Sunday at 4.20, you can watch Super Troopers 2. It's on at the same time in cinemas all around New Zealand. Everyone's favourite law enforcement team is back by popular demand with a long-anticipated follow-up to the cult comedy classic to celebrate we've got a bunch of double passes to give away on our Facebook page look now for the post to win or listen to this show give us a call on 0800 Hodecky and we'll give you a couple of tickets to Super Troopers 2 right now that's right Jace exciting stuff now uh, should we give this guy a call oh hold on I'll give these tickets away first. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end up giving him the tickets yeah well we probably would knowing us let's go to Corey g'day mate <laughs> G'day, mate. How's life, Corey? Oh, yeah, not bad, not bad. Good on you, buddy. Good on you. You keen to go and see this movie, yes? Oh, yeah, yeah. It'd be bloody beautiful. Sounds good, my friend. Well, I'll tell you what. You've got two tickets to go and see Super Troopers 2. What we'll do is we'll uh, hold you on the line and get Tom to sort you out. Oh, thank you. No worries, mate. You have a great afternoon. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Very lucky, wasn't he? We just about gave those tickets, that movie, away to that guy that hates our guns. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the show. Let's give him a call. You really want to call him? Yeah, let's do it. Um, all the phone lines are all chucked up at the moment with uh, with other callers. God. Just well, I mean, what are you going to say to him if we call him? Ooh, just say, you know, reason with him. So, you know, and we'll find out where he works and give a shout out to the people that are listening to the show there. Oh, yeah, I suppose we could do that. Yeah. Should we do that next then? Well, well, he might be listening to the show right now and going, I'm not going to answer my phone if they're going to... Well, if he doesn't answer his phone, he's going to look a bit of a pussy, isn't he? Okay, well, we'll do that after the break, shall we? Yeah. Give him a call. Good on you, mate. Good on Oh, beautiful. And that, of course, Jace, was the voice of 350 students in the Philippines. Oh, brilliant stuff, Doing mate. a g'day, mate. So that's good to see the show is spreading um, far and wide. Indeed it is. Hey, uh, we just played the Arctic Monkeys. Now, Radio Hodak here giving you the chance to head to an exclusive sold-out album launch gig at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Los Angeles the week before it's released. You'll be one of the first in the world to hear the new tunes. So text ARCTIC and your details to 3483 now. 
for you and a mate to go on the jaw to see Arctic Monkeys it perform their Arctic, Arctic. Arctic Monkeys perform their classic bangers and new tracks. I find Arctic really hard to say. Do you pause between the C and the T? Interesting. Arctic. I don't know. Arctic. I've got a bit of a bit of trivia for you. Okay. Sausage, sausage related. Great as, stuff. As you imagine, not surprising coming from me. Um, I heard this from someone involved in Hellers today. Uh, I was at a food show. Yeah. And um, you said classic bangers there. Sausages, of, of course, get called bangers on occasion, don't they? Yes, they do. Bangers and mash, etc. I had bangers last night, my deviled sausages. There you go, bangers. Now, where did the term bangers come from? Uh, I imagine it was some sort of cooking scenario where perhaps they got overheated and they exploded? You're not far off. Aha! Uh -huh. The skins, the skins you're not, burst. You're not far off, either of you. Not as dumb as you look. During World War One, of I course... I they look quite intelligent. During World War One, they were short of meat, obviously, the British troops in the trenches. They, they had to, to make the sausages go a lot further, mix a whole lot of water through them, you know, to make the lot, lot you know... Make more of them, yeah. yeah. So they obviously cooked them in oil, and when they cooked them, because of all the water in them, they often would bang, explode wow. quite loudly and quite, you know, in, in a big way. So they started calling them bangers. Well, you've got some really interesting um, sort of, uh, what would you call it, historical facts about the word hippie you were saying a little bit uh, earlier in the show. Yeah, do you want me, yeah, well, basically the word hippie, which we often uh, refer to as, uh, you think of a hippie of someone in the 60s, yeah, probably 1960s. long hair, probably Taking um, hallucinogen. suede waistcoat, yes. all this sort of stuff. Flare shirt pants. on, yeah. Um, well, that came. It was. It was before that, in the opium dens back in the twenties, thirties, even beforehand. Yes. Um, when they took opium, you'd end up lying on on a little bed on your side, on your side yes. for a couple of days at a time. You wouldn't wouldn't move. You wouldn't even rotate to the other side. So what would happen? These guys would end up going to the doctor with sort of bed sores, I suppose, on, on one the, side on their hip, on their the hips, hip yeah. joint. So they they were called hippies. So you can imagine the the older generation, the sort of World War Two generation, when they started saw these sort of drug taking young people in the sixties, they, they called them hippies. Yeah, because yeah. Because of that, well, it makes sense. Of course, a lot of the great poets were all opium. Oh yeah, they're all you know, that. The Wordsworth and all those guys they just smack up a bit of opium. You were never into it, were you? No, no. Speaking I, of great poets, I mean, the, you, wow. Well, you know, I, it wasn't readily available when to me when I was doing my... are going to see some of this poetry, Jase? Have you managed to track anything down on... Well, I, I brought in my, my poetry from my school days, actually. I found an old school journal. It was moving, emotional, powerful stuff. Well, have you done it already? And I can't tell you, uh, show you my poems that I wrote when I had my year of poetry because my girlfriend at the time ripped them all up in a, a state of peak. But surely there must be a poem in that in itself. You could write a poem about that. Well, it what? destroyed the urge in me to write poems. 500 poems that she ripped up all Scattered in tiny the pieces. pieces. Is far and wide, my life is destroyed. For my soon to be bride, you must have something in well, there. No, from she, that. she wasn't to be my bride, she left me. Yeah, but surely, you know, I mean, that an emotional experience. She ripped up your poetry, for God's sake. Well, no, because it killed something in me, to be honest. It destroyed my belief in what I was doing. And I had no copies, I could never recreate them. Mm. It was a difficult time for Hoyt. Covered a lot off then. Now look, coming up we're going to ring this guy who hates the show and us and um, have a chat to him. Sounds good, mate. Lee Hart and Jason Hoyt are Booja Till 7 tonight on Radio Hodaki. Red Hot Chili Peppers there uh, this uh, Wednesday afternoon. Someone's texted in Lee Hart had a few of my poems torn to pieces in the past. I just pulled bits out of an old shoebox and read it and read it now. Quite good, actually. So there you go. Yeah, I sometimes think you when get you back do, into it, Jason. You, know? you know, it's like when you're writing music. At the time, you go, "Oh my God, that's just appallingly bad." Yeah. And then you go back. You know, a few years pass, and you play that song again, or you rediscover that song. Go, actually, that was quite good. No, most most cases, I've gone back and and heard it again, and God, God, it's really, really heinous. Yeah, it's worse and, than I imagined. First, it, 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 there was context at least. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was in love, or I was, you know, I was young at least. I was stupid. I was young and passionate. Listen to it now; it's just absolutely cheesy overwritten underperformed and out of tune yeah what are, what type of poems did you go for so your limericks your haikus no 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 I, I wasn't I didn't get too hung up on the rhyming of things just you know observational Matt so you and I right we could be like Elton John and Bernie Taupin see okay. Bernie Taupin did all the lyrics oh did he Elton John just did the music so he would Bernie Taupin would send 
out in John, just all this, all these words almost in prose form. Yes. Actually, I don't know how he wrote them, if they were in some sort of layout or what. And then Elton John would just apply music to it and look at those hits. Yeah. So well, we, we should true. catch up for coffee on that and see if we can replicate that. I thought you were going to say you could be like Elton John and Kiki D. Oh, no, no. No, you, could, you'd be more the Kiki D. That'd be impressive, though. We could... Um, I'd watch that. We could uh, create our own Bouja Candle in the Wind type. Yep. You know, that would be amazing. Rocket Man. Rocket Man, all that sort of jazz. Bougie Man. I used to send, I don't know, you won't remember a band called Bressa Creeding Cake, I don't no. imagine. Um, a New Zealand band. Great band. Good friends of mine. I used to write lyrics for those fellas. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what happened to them? Uh, well, they went on, they split and went on to become Golden Horse with Kirsten Morrell. Oh, yes. Um, we'll play a bit of it later on, a bit of Bressa Creeding Cake. Well, you know we won't. No, we probably won't. Chewbacca and won't let us. But anyway, speaking of tunes, the time is 4.53, which means, of course, it's time for Lee Hart's Name That Tune. I'm going to take you back, New Zealand, to the late 60s. Okay? And I don't know how far I'm going to go with this song before you need to, before you need to stop me, Jace. But here we go. Ready? Okay, mate. If you can name that tune, New Zealand, give us a call right now on 0800 Hodak. You love to hear from you. Sounded good, mate. Sounded Thanks, good. Mate. Uh, with KFC, the Zinger Mozzarella Burger has a brand new Zinger coated mozzarella patty. This is Booja with Lee Hart and Jason Voice. Yeah, sure is. Great to have you company this Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Rafa Nadal, great tennis player, but I just cannot watch the guy. I think he's overrated. Oh, no, he's one of the greats. You think, you think, I mean, just why I've got you there talking tennis, I know you know your stuff. Yes. Federer, is he overrated? N- no. Okay. The greatest of all time. But Rafa Nadal, he has this habit of twitching and, and wiping and plucking the pants out of his ass all the time. I just, I can't handle it, Lee. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much tennis you've played, but if you've got your shorts tucked up your ass, it's not easy. Yeah, well, I mean, but he, he does it every point. He pulls his undies out of his ass. I think it's a Someone's got to get him some a proper pair of undergarments. Mm. He's a mm. heavy, sweating, superstitious type, isn't he? Well, he certainly is, Matty. Now, Can you compare your Nadals with, say, your Borgs? Yes, I think you can. I mean, there's only one of them. I mean, just, just beyond Borg. Beyond Borg. Beyond. Beyond. Beyond Borg. Beyond Borg. Was now, he I, the greatest of all time? Well, it's like trying to compare, you know, cricketers from different eras as well. I don't th- I don't think you can, really. It's like trying to compare me on the guitar with, say, Eric Clapton. He's a different generation, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, kind of like that. You know, now, different generations. Speaking yeah. of you on the guitar, do you want to do a bit of a refresh? Because we had Lee Hart's Name yep. That Tune. Here I we go again. a bit again. of a thing I read. Do. Then it goes... Well done. I get it from that, they're not going to get it. Let's go to the phone lines. Terry and Tall Paul. Get out, Madge! Get out, Madge! Get out, How's Tall Paul today? Oh, pretty blustery, pretty tornado y. Yeah. But uh, fine now. It can get bloody cold down there, can't it? Very cold. Yeah. That water yeah, comes it, off the lake, you can. see, doesn't it? The water comes off the lake. Well, the, the wind. wind comes off the water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff, Terry. All right, my friend, can you uh, name that tune? <laughs> Uh, Leonard Skinner Ooh. and uh, Sweet Home Alabama. Well, you were thinking of this one. Interesting. Ah, uh, right. Terry, you're wrong, but can I say to you, if I said to Terry, Terry, what would you like to hear on Radio Horeki music-wise, what would you say? Uh, music-wise? Yeah. Hmm, bit of ABBA? Yeah, nice. ABBA? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sweet. No, no. No, no. Credence, bit of credence. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. No, don't mind a bit of credence. Good on you, Terry. Thanks for your call, man. Thanks for listening. Cheers, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, buddy. Let's go to Nigel and Wainui. G'day, mate. 
Good night. How's life? That's bloody good. Now that I'm speaking to you, fine gentlemen, how is it going for you? Yeah, well, good, thanks, good mate. Good now that I'm speaking to you, mate. I, I, I'll describe the... Um, the studio for you at the moment. We had a delivery from KFC, so there's just carnage everywhere, oh, Nigel. Absolute beautiful. KFC carnage. Crazy fingers. It's like a whole lot of chickens are flying through a 747 yeah. engine. Yeah, it? a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so. Now, Nigel, can you name that tune? Well, it's definitely Nature. And my first thought was a mutton bird, but if Lee's playing the one from the late 60s, then it's the formula, I think. Mm, well, you're right Wayne, that it's. Wayne Mason. Yeah, well, that was the original version of that song, but unfortunately it wasn't that song, which I'm starting oh, to already really? question my abilities now. Yeah, well, I, I so, <laughs> it sounds like you know your music, Nigel, but I'm afraid yeah, that's, that's not quite right. So okay. thanks for the call anyway, buddy. You have a great afternoon. No worries, mate. Thanks, you man. Too. Let's go to Nilish in Auckland. G'day, mate. Hey, mate. How you going? Yeah, good, man. Yourself? Oh, not bad. Not bad, thanks. Yeah, that's good, mate. That's good. Can you name that tune? Pretty sure it's White Room by Cream, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is, Nilish. Of course it was, mate. Of course it was. Stay in the line. We've got huge, huge amount of prizes for you. Sure do. Awesome. Well done, buddy. See? Jack Bruce, that Jace singing, playing oh, okay. bass. you good. Clapton on guitar, Ginger Baker on the drums. Brilliant stuff, mate. You right, Matty? Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, where were you when this was number one, guys? Well, I tell you what, unfortunately I wasn't alive, but wish yeah. I was. I wasn't wish even I was. a twinkle in my dad's eye at that point, Matty. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Should we go do a bit of Marcy Playground, shall we? Yeah. Good on you, mate. Hanging round. Marcy Playground there. Uh, what's your sort of... Um, sort of take on end of day prophecies kind of thing Lee Hart are you a big believer in that sort of stuff oh, to be honest with you no uh, because old, if it's in the bible I certainly don't believe it uh, because our mate Motorhead yep. uh, he sent in 23rd of this month end of all days Jupiter the sun and the moon and line planet Nibiru showing up in the second coming of the BB Hesu so party like it's illegal well what day is that the 23rd it, do we know no what's the date today if it's free for Friday we'll be partying like that anyway yeah that's true that's sort of true. A win-win, isn't it? Is that code for Trump's got his finger on the button for the nukes? Look, you know, I saw a good documentary on on the Bible and Christianity and the history and that again last night, and um, I sort of knew all this. You know, most of the Bible is you know wasn't even written until three hundred years after Jesus died. Yes, and there's about ten different prophets that they were drawing on at the time, and there's one hundred years after Jesus that was actually got even more famous than Jesus, but he ended up doing a, a revolution that actually did have a war and in Israel and they all got wiped out and so they got shit let's go to the passive way again so they kind of wrote him out of history he was actually the more popular one went back to Jesus and then there was a whole lot of other religions and that the Romans basically said look to rule this place and Rome let's just combine the whole lot they chose Jesus as the sort of figurehead of it, and they brought all the other religions into it, like the the breaking of the bread, the wine, and all that was from another religion altogether. Um, the Mary Magdalene, that's all to do a thing called ISIS, and it just combined it into one religion, and he had very little to do with it. I oh no, you go, Matty. I was just saying, I thought the bread and wine was the like the Last Supper. This is no, nah, they wrote that in later blood. on, and, and but it's, I mean the Bible that part wasn't written yet. They wrote that in. I listened to a great, uh, speaking of which, uh, a great audio the other day of a, a guy who was a priest for 40 odd years. He no longer believes in God anymore. But he was talking about the Bible and how, you know how people use the Bible. It says in the Bible, it says blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And he was saying, what you've got to remember about the Bible, it was written by human beings with all the foibles, with all the stupidity, with all the mistakes that all human beings have. And so when you say and start quoting from the Bible, it's just as fallible as everything else is. Oh, totally. But also... Uh, using How do we get into this? It's all for political gain. I mean, it was Constantine, the Roman emperor, that started Christianity, not Jesus. He was the one that basically said, as law, this but, is what the religion's going to be. If he hadn't done that, you wouldn't even you wouldn't have heard of it by now. Well, he was a Jew. 
Well, he converted later in his life, but he could have gone anyway. And he basically said, okay, we'll go with this one, a bit of this, we'll take a bit of that in there, and we're going to go with this. What really the upsets path of least resistance. What really upsets me about, you know, how time changes, you know, and history changes is that people forget what amazing outdoor furniture Jay Who actually made. Well, yeah, that's it. You, you know see? what I mean? That's initially what he was really well known for. You know, he had great outdoor furniture. It sold like hotcakes. You yep. don't hear about that very much, do you? You don't. And it brings around to this um, Falau guy. Who has gone on about oh, homosexuality things? Yes. I just saw something on here on Twitter. Someone's, you know, we're talking about quoting the Bible, quote for quote. Yes. There's a picture of him standing there, shirt off, looking pretty buff, I might add. With, um, Do you find him attractive? Some amazing, beautiful tattoos all over his body. Yes. Some are obviously from his uh, Polynesian tattoos look very, very well done. And Falau, I think, written across his chest. And then there's, there's a quote from the Bible. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoo any marks on you. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19.28. So that's in the Bible, that you should not do that to your flesh in the Bible. There you go. You can't pick and grab what you need. Well, that's what they do, though, isn't it? I went, I went to a Catholic school and we always had to read the Bible every now and then. We always went to Leviticus 18. Did was, you? Yeah, that was all the dirty stuff. Leviticus, yeah. That was all the dirty stuff you're not allowed to do. He was a dirty bugger, Leviticus, wasn't he? Was he? Yeah. <laughs> can we find some Leviticus? What is it? Leviticus. Le- Leviticus. Leviticus 18. Le- Leviticus 18. Can we find that, please, Matt? I'd like to read it. Is it? White stripes there on uh, Daily Boucher. G'day, lads. Can you please do a shout-out to Murray, who looks bloody fantastic in his new Waka Changi and deserves a cold bevy or two. Cheers, Speedy G. There you go, And uh, someone said, did you just quote my tweet without giving credit, bro? Rough. That was the tweet I did about the tattoos on um, Israel Falau. Yes. Um, from what I can gather, I hope it's them, it was from Emma Hart. And if it's someone else... Any relation? Know. No relation? No. Not that I know of. Um, Maddie, you mentioned Leviticus, saying that it was pretty saucy stuff. <clears throat> Leviticus 18, it's basically all the stuff you can't do that it says in the Bible. We found some church music, it's actually yeah, that's great. Bohemian Rhapsody on organ. Do you think we're getting quite religious on this? Well, I mean, we can, we can touch on it then, then move. Do not have sexual relations with your brother's wife. That well, that's would obvious. Your brother. Beat the crap out of me. <laughs> uh, do not have sexual relations with both a woman and her daughter. That's a no to the calf and cow. Mm, reckon? <laughs> well, that's on a case-by-case case basis, surely. <laughs> Uh, do you think that ever in the Bible, in the Ten Commandments? What do you mean it's on a case by case basis? <laughs> do you think Jesus saw that whoever wrote the things, there was ever sort of a fine print or a brackets, parentheses at the end that went, <laughs> um, common sense will come into play here, or this is on a case by case basis? Asterix, refer. Yeah, refer. <laughs> <laughs> do not take your wife's sister as a rival wife and have sexual relations with her while your wife is living. Well, that's common sense too. God, it's bad enough having one wife. Someone's texted in Leviticus. If a man lies with another man, he should be stoned, which explains why some or states... Drunk. Which explains why some states legalised SSM and cannabis at the same time. I see. You, you got see. it? You yeah. got it? Do, do not have sexual relations with your neighbour's wife and defile yourself with her. See, I reckon there's a lot of that going on. Yeah, they obviously had a lot of that going on back in the day to sort of keep going on about it, <laughs> you know. I think the only one you need to remember, right... Do unto others as, as you, you would have, have them do, do unto you. If yes. you remember that, it pretty much covers everything. Is that, it's still in a sexual sense. Anything. Would you want your brother to have sex with your wife? No. I don't have there a wife. you go. You know what I mean, though. That's all you need to remember. I think, that, I think the neighbour one's a bit harsh. Well, and the mother and daughter thing's a bit harsh too, because well, no, I think the mother and daughter thing's totally appropriate. Quite frankly, Lee. Cow. Well, not if you don't know the mother and daughter. If you don't, if they're not, if you don't, not in relationship with either of them. What, you, you mean you have a relationship separately with a mother and daughter? What if you meet them on Craigslist? I'm not talking about your wife's mother or your your or your or wife's daughter. I'm talking about... A separate mother and daughter, yeah, completely. A, a separate mother and daughter scenario. Well, what would happen when, when say, the, you were going out with a daughter and, and she took you home to meet her mum and you'd been... Well, there's been plenty of great comedy rom-coms done on it. Can't get it on with your daughter-in-law either. Oh... Yeah, see, now Jason's a bit disgusted. Yeah, you got to think, people were pretty basic back then. They needed some pretty well-defined rules, Who is this they? Leviticus fella? I don't know, but he... <laughs> yeah, he obviously, his job was ready to go, <laughs> to go down to the nitty-gritty. Leviticus, can you cover off all the stuff that's... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, dearie me. Leviticus probably invented the 69er, <laughs> if you think about it. Best Queen to the Stone Age. <laughs> Talking heads there on uh, Daily Bougie. Now, the time is uh, 5.27, which means, of course, being a Wednesday, that up after the next tune, we're going to do the KFC Wheel of Chicken. So if you want to play that, give us a call right now on 0800 Hodaki. What can, we, can, can we say, sorry, Jace, before you do that? Yes. If you've played it before... Don't ring through because we're going to ask and it could get awkward. So yes. we're trying to get a new player every game. Indeed. Uh, and on that note, the good folk at KFC, bless their lovely hearts, sent us some sticky wicked wings. Very mm. nice. Absolute carnage in the studio. We hoe through those. What did you think, Lee Hart, of the Zinger mozzarella burger? Yeah, I liked it. Yes, I'm, you were I'm, saying. I'm a, I'm a fan of the, the normal Zinger burger. Yeah. If you know what I'm saying. But it was nice to have a, a twist on it very much so and my it was friend good. very tasty I don't need dinner tonight that's for sure there's Fat Freddy's drop it's the KFC wheel chicken oh yes indeed a highlight of the Daily Bougeau week of course the KFC wheel of chicken we've got Jackie on the line g'day mate hi how's life Jackie uh, pretty good thank you now that I've got through to you yes yeah, sweet where are you calling from uh, Auckland City. Nice, yeah. nice. I don't, I don't want to be blasphemous. I'm just following up from what we talked earlier about Jesus, etc. I reckon if the Last Supper, well, if KFC was around back then, that's <laughs> what they would have had the Last Supper. I reckon. KFC. Yeah. They would have had. I don't think they would have dined in. I think they would have got takeaways and sat behind that big table, and some would have had chicken wings. Um, the the um, mozzarella zinger burger, zinger burger. Mm. Others would go original recipe. Well, they went to an Indian BYO, didn't they? I think they did in the end. It all yeah. sat on one side of the biggest table. How annoying mm. is that? Mm. Mm. We've digressed again. Sorry, yeah, sorry, Jackie. <laughs> um, obviously, of course, you've never played the KFC Wheel of Chicken. No, I haven't. You know that, of course, it changes your life. You become a bit of a celebrity in your local area. Yes, I've heard. Brilliant, uh, and obviously, Jackie, you're a, you're a KFC fan. I most certainly am. Good yeah. on you, Jackie. Okay, let's cut to the chase then. A hard Do you know where that saying comes from? No. Binding books. What? What? Cut to the chase. It's like the contraption where you where you, you fold something over when you're making a book. I, mm-hmm. I went to a bookmaking thing. I was very bored and rough. Well, that's when you're making love. You cut to the chase, you fold something over. No, that's when you skip foreplay. Oh, dear. Oh, okay. Now, Jackie, hard, yeah. medium or soft spin? Uh, hard. Hard, okay. Uh, clockwise, anti-clockwise? Anti, please. Hard anti, thanks, Maddie. I know the one. There it is. Boom, chuckalucker. There you go. You've never said that before, have you? (laughs) I've never said that before. I tell you what, Jackie, um, it's great that you really like KFC, as everyone really does, because you've just won a $100 KFC voucher. That Woo! is amazing. Thank you so much. No worries at all. No, it's amazing how often it gets stuck on that $100 KFC voucher. Well, I'm that good. <laughs> hey, Jackie, you really enjoy that. Thanks for listening, and uh, stay on the line. We'll sort you out. No worries at all. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jackie. Brilliant stuff. There you go. Oh, no, it started in silent films, apparently. What did? Cut to the chase. Yeah, I was going oh, to say, I think compl- Cut to the chase you're completely wrong there, man. Making books. Silent films. I mean, if you're going to say something on the radio, please make sure it's based on Factual. fact yeah. and that it's absolutely been verified. Think American Medical Journal. Think it has to be verified by at least a thousand people before you can you say it you on radio. You hear me and Jace just talking crap the whole time. No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that's my bad. Sorry, guys. That's facts, right, man. Matt. Facts. I'll go back to Leviticus. <sighs> Some facts for you from the bar. <laughs> facts. That's what we ask. Daily Boucher with KFC. Foo Fighters there on uh, Daily Boucher this Wednesday afternoon. You know, I was um, watching CNN today, Lee. Yeah. And, and, and I was watching Donald Trump, and they were talking about all his tweets and stuff. And I mean, he's an absolute nightmare. We all know that. Yada yada yada. Um, you know. But I, then I thought to myself, you know what? Even when Donald Trump is not president, it's going to be even worse. He is going to be untethered, and it's just going to be a tweeting fecal storm. From well, this is uh, the problem with the social media. 
There's just Absolutely too much of it, the tweeting. I mean, even this bloody Israel Falao story, I don't want to bring that up again, but yep. it's only because of Twitter and that, that it's even a story because there's like, thousands of people out there with that same opinion, thousands of people out there that don't have the same opinion, but no one really knows about it. Yeah. Well, you look at someone like Obama, you don't hear from Obama. He did it with dignity. He's left the office. He's not, you know. But Trump's just going to be an absolute dead set nightmare after he's lost the presidency. Do you even. think you'll leave, lose, um, leave this job with dignity when it's time to go? Yes, I think I will. Matt? It's not that far away. Well, yeah, I think mine's four weeks. That you're leaving this show? Well, that's how long I'm going to give. Notice. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Or did you give you notice today, did you? Well, not today. But Thinking about it, eh? Could be any day. Okay. Are you taking up that offer from the muffin? No, uh, innocuous theme. Not granola hits. No, well, I'm under. I'm contractually obliged not to disclose anything. It is a breakfast, oh, right, a breakfast okay. show. I, miss bloody I know you want a breakfast show, though. I know that oh. much. I don't know, it's really mm. starts. Not Nutra hits, is it? I, c I can't say. Okay, all right. Well, I hope we get a suitable replacement in time. Wow. Well, we need our full four-week notice before we uh, replace you. Actually, just on, you know, leaving, leaving the radio, which, of course, we will um, at some point, I'm looking forward to um, doing something completely different. Actually going and leaving behind the entertainment stuff and going in a completely different direction. Will it involve a loincloth? No. Would you call what you've been doing entertainment, would you? Well, I mean, it's tenuously, tenuously. Entertainment stuff. I'd like to get into something like personal training. Mm. Mm. You can do it. You could do, do the course part-time in the mornings now. So you can segue seamlessly into it. <laughs> can you imagine me, the pet talks in the morning? I can see you into sort of. I was at the food show today, and I can just picture you with your own little stall there, Jace's hummuses or something. Jace, something, something niche like that. Well, of course, I always have the option. Jace's as, salted nuts, as as you've always known me, had of. Once you put Jace's the, nuts in your mouth, you never look back. Can you can you can you see me? You know, I can see myself segueing quite successfully into a huge infomercial career. Yeah. You know, uh, a.k.a. Suzanne Paul. You've got the voice. You've got the look. Thanks, mate. You can read lines can most of the time. Can you say thousands of luminous spheres? Uh, thousands of luminous spheres. And I can wear a good turtleneck. Mm. So many yeah. options. You know what I mean? People, this is what happens in life. People think they can only do one thing. But actually, the world's full of opportunities. That's right. A door closes and a cat flap opens, doesn't it? True, mate. It's deep. It's yeah. pretty amazing. It's good, eh? Is that Leviticus? Top of the... Yeah, Leviticus chapter 3, verse 4. Here's old Jay. I want to share your mouthful. And just, you know, allow that to cool and then, you know, serve well, Then it. pour it on. Yeah, then pour it on. Because if you pour it on when it's not cooled, it's, um, it just tends to run everywhere. And you okay. just have a bit of a... All right, I prefer it warm, then it might sort of seep through the layers a bit more, but no, okay. No, no, you've got to let it cool, definitely. Definitely. Good. Great. Okay, yeah. for the full recipe, um, go to the website there, listeners. Now, look... Um, just, can I just say something yeah, yeah, on that? Um, are we, you know, um, Maddie was just showing me on the Instagram account that we have... You can have a breakdown of all, you know, where all your your Instagram followers are and stuff. 80-20 split between men and women. Mm. Well, 79-21 if you get picky. 79-21. So I'd, it would be good to get a few more women listening to the show. So, sorry, is that there's 21 women in the country listening to the show? No, 79% no. is our, a male audience a, and 21% is female. Yeah, but how do we know we have more than 100 listeners? That's what I want to know. So yeah. maybe it is 79. We've got... Uh, I guess they just sort of round it out. How are we doing on the Instagram account, by the way? We've got 10.7 thousand, I think. Ah, okay. But, you know, there's always room for more. Daily Boozer on Instagram. And Facebook, of course. Boozer. What's just Boozer, is it? Uh, isn't it Hodaki Boozer? Yep, could be. Well, um, da daily Boozer. You'll Booger. find it. And uh, it's got a lot of good videos on there and stuff. And oh, Exciting, you know. Behind-the-scenes footage. Jace getting ready for the show. Prepping. Now, you were going to say something, and I interrupted you rudely. What were you going to say? Can you remember what it was that was on your mind? Something was troubling you. Um. Oh, and by the way, someone's texted and saying, someone's, I can't say exactly what they've said, bloody tapping on their microphone. Could you stop it, please? I mm. think what we need on the uh, the Bougie Instagram is more sex appeal, Jason. You are obviously the... 
the candy. Well, no, you you clearly the eye candy, Matt. I've gone well beyond the eye okay, candy can stage. Can I try and make a, a observation? I was on the Bougie Facebook page the other day. Okay, just yeah. looking at it and see what's on there, and I, I think I'm one of the administrators, so I can upload things and do that kind of stuff and invite people that don't follow our Bougie page, right? And it'll become up how that works it's people that might follow one of your other pages like there's a lee hart one so i was so it's had all these people that don't follow it and the fourth name that came up was you oh me so you're not even following the bougie page jace no <laughs> is there a reason for that or well, you just I, haven't got around to it i'm not on facebook or twitter well, you were weren't you i was but you i went off it have you yeah i paid it it's because you're too busy brewing poppy seed tea I was going to actually tonight, seriously, and then I've just I googled it and went, holy hell, I'm not doing that. That's mm. pretty intense. No, I don't have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, any of that stuff. Good. Okay, I don't mind. I'm I'm I'm, I'm pulling back myself, to be honest. But if I followed anything, it would be the Bougie page and the Nightwolf, of course. What what a what a terrible um, social media plug we've just done. Yeah, we've spent the first half trying to get people to join the Bougie page and the the. The Instagram, Instagram, and Twitter. The second half bagging it and saying how we're pulling back out of social media. <laughs> can we start you on Instagram? No, I don't. I don't hate all that stuff. I hate it. But then you can follow my Instagram. It's bloody good. Wow, well, nah. And my phone's too chocker with stuff. It won't let me download like old stuff. School. I like old school connections. I don't mind the text machine. And we yeah. talked about Mike Lane earlier about getting out in the field, doing some sort of road out in the field, meeting people at shopping malls, that kind of stuff. Here's a text. Hi, guys. Levi Hart here. Long lost, long lost son of Lee Hart. Yes. Well, I'll be the judge of that. We'll look into that further shortly. Shout out to the new lad, Rob. I got hooked on Daily Bougie. How good? Good on you, good Levi. On Rob. Well, who, who's who's Rob? He's the guy, He's the guy. Levi got Rob hooked on to Bougie. Oh, good on you, Rob. And yeah. Levi. Thanks for listening, buddy. Good stuff. Daily Bougie with KFC. Blue there on uh, Radio Hodeki. Now, Radio Hodeki is stoked to announce the return of Biffy Clyro. Uh, Tuesday, April 24th at Spark Arena in Auckland. Tickets are on sale now. Uh, if you want a double pass to that, give us a call right now on 0800 Hodeki and you can get ticket details from the gigs page at hodeki.co.nz. Just like that, Lee Hart. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go to a caller on the line, shall we? G'day, Matt. Hey, mate. How you going, man? Ooh, man, he's turning oh, your, your radio Turn your radio down there, fella. Yeah, all right, all right. Good stuff. Who's this? Uh, it's Jason here. Jason, how you going? Good man, real good, real good. What's, ha what's happening, Jason? Oh, no, you go, Lee. I was going to say, whereabouts are you, Jason? Ah, uh, Centennial Park. I was going to say that. That's what I was thinking. We did you Look get the, the vibe? Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just hanging out here, listening to the show. Good on you, mate. So yeah, you want to go to this? You want to go to this gig? Yeah, fucking a, fuck yeah. Okay, what? Well, good stuff. Kiss your mother with that mouth. Now, Jason. Uh, <laughs> the great news for you, mate, is we'll give you those two tickets, okay? All right? No worries at all. Sure. Two tickets, right? So who are you going to take with you? Uh, I'll have to ask someone. I'm not sure yet. Sounds like there's a couple of people there in the background. No, no. Well, someone looking the dog, but yeah, yeah. I'll, See if they want to go. Uh, yeah, I could do. Make a new <laughs> yeah. friend in the park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good looking, stuff. Looking, looking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jace. Will you stay on the line, mate, and uh, we'll sort you out with those tickets. How does that sound? Rad, bro. Thanks. Good yeah, on you, mate. Stuff. Thanks for listening. Having a great afternoon. Great to hear people in the park too. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think he's getting stoned. Mm. Do you? I I don't think I've ever been in a park listening to a radio station. Stoned. Oh, I have been in a park stoned, but not listening to a radio station. Mm. I mean, I've never really. Outside of my house and my car, listen to a radio station. Maybe we could talk to the councils. I'm, I'm always thinking how we can broaden our, yeah, nice. our base. Maybe we can talk to the, the all the city councils and see if we can be the official radio show of parks. Like Albert Park. And put little speakers around the place and only our, only only us as broadcasts. Brilliant idea. And what about trains and stuff? Yeah, we'll, we'll get onto them. You name it. Do you think they would possibly spoil the tranquility of parks? No. He's walking along, sort of wind nah. blowing. Is it? Ah, it'd be great, wouldn't it? Oh, I think it would be. But, you know, you make a fair point, Matty. 
Just being the devil's advocate, guys. You don't have to go to the park. I mean, when you were at your Walkman, Lee, did you used to listen to a radio station on your Walkman? Well, you couldn't. It was just tapes, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, that's right. We're on, Jase. Oh, okay. Um, bit of green tape here. So... <laughs> You almost don't have to introduce the song nowadays because people know what it is. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, oh, no, I was just reading that Lee and Jason the Nutters keep nutting, fellas. I just don't know what that means. But so, anyway. I'm, so I'm not nutting? No, I guess not. I don't understand. See, this is the problem with tech sometimes. You know, you can get the completely wrong idea of what someone's saying. Because you had that thing with your ex-partner, didn't you, when you texted her and broke up with her, Matt? Uh, did I? No, I broke up with her in a car. Oh, right, okay, that was... Oh, always, I might awkward. have been thinking of Lee. Because I don't get out. I mm. had a dental appointment the next morning. Right, okay. What? So a little bit you broke up in a car because you had a dental appointment the next day. Well, no, I just so happened to have a dental appointment the next next day. That was more my excuse for wanting her to get out of the car, but she didn't want to get out of the car. It was, it was a comment. So you broke up with her and said, I've got a dental appointment tomorrow, can you get out of the car? Well, no, in the back of my head I was going, God, I've got that early dental appointment. I'd, I'd love to get home and get eight hours, but I've got this crying person. In the car. I, was about, I was 18, you know? Nowadays oh, I'd do it by a chest. Jeez, what a brutal bastard you were, Matt. Yeah, I've, you, heard, I've heard about Lothario Ward. You set up back a Back in my day, you know, we couldn't just break up with text or a mobile couldn't do it. We had to use a bloody phone booth or ring up from a, well, from you, a landline. You used to just free to call. You used to leave the city, didn't you? Yeah. Didn't you? Didn't you set then up do a collect call? They pay the charges, then you break up with them. Didn't you set up a picnic? Then in the beginning of the picnic, you broke up with her. Then you had to have a really awkward picnic. Yeah, bad call. Well, she it was really tense, and so I thought. You know, let's let's crack into it because it was on the tip of my tongue, and I just wanted to get it over and done with. So I just immediately went, "Oh, look, I don't want to go out with you anymore because I just couldn't handle it anymore. I didn't want to hold it throughout the entire lunch." You were, and, hoping- then, and then we had to have a lunch and a few glasses of wine to. You were hoping I for breakup up sex, with. weren't you? Well, so she didn't just leave. No, she stayed. Is that such a thing, breakup sex? It was a hell of a picnic, I'd pack, yeah. Lee. It was a hell of a picnic. B&E pie, sandwiches, wine, hors d'oeuvres. Why did you bother making such a good picnic if you were going to break up? Well, I thought at the least I could do if I'm going to break up with her is, you know, make a nice lunch for her. Like the Last Supper. The Last Supper kind of scenario. Yeah, okay. I didn't want her to all be unpleasant. You know, I wanted to be some... You've got to be careful that. You're laying it on, the bacon and egg pie, the sandwiches, the wine. She probably thinks you're going to propose to her. And then yeah, you, end up, you end up breaking up with her. It's the extreme. You just want to maybe do that in a, a normal situation. Oh, g'day, how are you going? What? I want to break up. Oh, g'day, how are you going? Do you want to, I want to break up with no, you. No, but the, I, don't, I don't understand the picnic. Bringing bacon and egg pie but sends mixed messages. Yeah, I guess it does. That speaks of family and togetherness, doesn't it? The old B and E pie. Mm. You like a bacon and egg pie, Lee? No, I'm not the biggest fan of the bacon and egg pie, no. Matt? Uh, yeah, I'd, oh, I won't say no to a bacon and egg pie. You know, homemade. Usually hung over, to be honest. Homemade? Yeah, well, it would be, because I'd never buy one in a gas station or a cafe or something. Wouldn't you? No. Nah. Oh, the old B and E pie. You've got to go B and E. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if I'm looking at a heated, I mean, I'm in, I'm in a cafe, a small town, New Zealand, and the, I see the warming drawer thing there. Yes. There's pies, steak and cheese, mince and cheese, stroganoff, stroganoff. Sausage, stroganoff. sausage rolls. Go B&E over and then there's a bacon egg pie sitting in the cold bacon egg pie there. Which am I going to get? Well, no, you can get a hot bacon and I egg know, pie. Still, I'd get two sausage rolls instead of a bacon egg pie. Huge call. Here's a choice for you. One pie or two sausage rolls. Here's Simple Minds. Quite an appropriate song for the breakups. Booja with Lee and Jace on Radio Hodaki. New one there from uh, the war on drugs. Yeah, now, Jace, earlier on we had a little text that came through, I think, a guy called Levi Hart saying he got us a guy, Rob. Got him onto the show. Levi said he's my long lost son. Yes. Perhaps. Look, if you, if, you, if you do think that's the case, um, in my case or indeed Jace's case, if you think you're related to us um, in, in that kind of way, um, ju- just get in chat. 
touch through the proper channels and leave your birth date, some information about yourself, perhaps when you were born, um, your full name, etc. And Jason and I will investigate that through the proper channels rather than coming through the prize line. That kind of stuff can be a bit unprofessional and a little uncouth, I think, dealing with that kind of um, issue in, in, that, in that way. So I think it's best... Just a bit of information, so the the people here in the in the in the offices the can follow up on it. Can follow up on it, yeah, and, yeah. and we can nice. get onto that. Well, do you remember when we did that um, DNA test? Yeah. What, what was that called? Ancestry DNA DNA or whatever. Blah blah blah. That freaked me out because they asked to speak to me before they did the show, and I was like, "What?" And they said, "Oh, we need, we've we've found a really close link to you." At the zoo? No, no, not at the zoo. And we need to talk to you about it before we actually discuss it on air. And so we were sitting in the studio, Ben, and I was thinking, oh, my God, what, what's happening? And they said, we've got this very close link. It's either your mother or your daughter. And, and I went... For, they asked for child support, didn't they? <laughs> that has happened. Um... And, it, and I was thinking, oh, my God, I've got a daughter that I don't know about. That'd be right. Not but again. It was actually, it was actually my birth mother, so that was okay. But it, I tell you what, it was a bit tenuous there for a while, Lee Hart. I'm not sure that I want all that information. I mean, if you want it, that's well, fine. Well, you want it. If it's there, it's there. You just handle it. But as I say, um, it, it may happen. We'll just handle it in the, in the proper procedures. We've got um, giveaways, T-shirts, prizes, stickers, that kind of stuff going on as well. So... We can deal with the... Do we need to specify, do people need to, you know, like, for example, this Arctic monkeys thing, people go Arctic and their details. Do we need to say... Daddy. Birth child, you know, Ronnie Evans, you know, Ronnie Hart or Hoyt or... Um, well, they wouldn't obviously have our names. Because then know, we'd know, yeah. well, it's possible birth child, birth dates, blah, 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 blah. And that's a starting point for the DNA team here to follow up on. Um, another little shout out. Hi, Team Bouger. This is my husband's birthday tomorrow. And he loves Biffy Clyro. Have we just given those tickets away? Yeah, we have, oh, unfortunately. Well, yeah, well, I'm, I'm tell, away. tell them. Any to chance of some tickets? Text her, uh, tell her to text um, tomorrow, and we'll give them the tickets tomorrow when it's his actual birthday. About Night Wolf. Or oh, Night Wolf. No, hey, there he call is. Call the Night Wolf. Oh, there he is. Tonight. Call the Night Wolf. What yeah. time would be good to call you, Matt? Don't call me, I'll call you. Oh, no, actually, call me. After seven. Seven. Just as soon as you guys leave, pretty much. Okay. Well, you look out for that number. You might want to. And also, um, happy birthday to your husband. Didn't leave his name, but have a good one. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. Great. Let's take a break. This is Food Daily Booja with KFC's new Zinger Mozzarella Burger. Seize the cheese. Soundgarden there on uh, Daily Booja. Um, I just want to ask you guys um, tonight. Yes. I'm all by myself. It's just me and the dog. And I was going to ask you fellas, you know, when you have the house to yourself or it's just you in the city. I mean, my wife and Terry and the kids have gone down for a bit of a holiday down in Tulpo. Terry. School, Terry, yep. Uh, with the school holidays and stuff. So I've got the house entirely to myself. Any recommendations, any thoughts as to what I might want to get up to? What do you fellas do when you're all alone at the house? You're the asking dog? us or the listeners? No, I'm asking you. Well, I'd, I'd normally maybe... You make yourself a meal and stuff, or... Uh, maybe a get a pizza from down the road or oh, something. Oh, yeah, or nice. Okay, pizza. Get, you know, do this. have a couple of beers, maybe. Beersies. Get the neighbours over. Get the neighbour over. Oh, I don't beer. really get on with my neighbour that well, actually. Well, he's down the road. He's not actually my literal neighbour. Oh, I, I, so you... Act- I'll get on with my neighbours, though. Right, you actually get people over and well, hang you out. you could do. You could do that, or you could have a quiet night by yourself. Yeah, bit of Netflix... Couple of, a, 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 a pottle of green tea. Bit of Netflix and chill by yourself. Yeah, okay. Treat yourself. What do you do, Matt, when you buy you? We've got the house to well, yourself. All the flatmates are out. No one's at home. Well, usually that's in the morning because they all go to work and obviously I'm, most nights I'm here. Right, okay. And, uh, well, you can't get up to too much. Certainly nothing dodgy being stuck in this studio, which is all made of glass. You're a professional radio DJ. Exactly. Um, but in the morning, oh, just a bit of uni. Bit of uni. Oh, good on you, mate. Often if I'm by myself, to be honest with you, I'll go through a lot of... The past shows, just randomly select one. Like the podcast or something like like that? Like, you know, show 317 from two years ago. And just have a listen to it and try and extract myself from the situation, pretend it wasn't me. What would I think of this show? Yeah, okay, okay. How would I make it better? So you basically keep working when you've got no one else around you. You just keep... Pretty much, yeah. Okay, oh, well, I... I've never actually gone through the shows and listened to them, so I could maybe do that tonight and come back tomorrow and give you a bit of a report on what I thought. Yeah. Uh, maybe you could um, you could download Instagram tonight. Nah, and post some post some pictures. Certainly not dick pics, but because you'll get banned off Instagram. But um, 
But you could you could do that. You could go online. Doesn't take long before you get some sort of random woman hooking up and saying, asking you to send photos and stuff to her. Speaking of online, how exciting is that? Did you know on Google? Look at this. You go on Google. Come on, my bloody open. You go on Google and you don't have to type it in, Lee Hart. You don't have to type it in. You can just do this. Wait on. It's just. You know radio is not a visual thing, don't you? No, I know it's not a visual thing, but wait. Here we go. You push the microphone. Lee Hart. Mm. Wait on. I think, I think voice recognition. Oh, oh, hang on. Wait, from, wait, wait. It's been a good 10 years, I think it's been around. Wait. Lee Hart. You don't have to do it into the microphone when you... Probably have to do it into oh, your Oh, that's phone. what I'm doing wrong. I'm talking into the microphone. Hang on. Wait. Just one more time. Give me one more chance. I need my glasses, actually. My show I starts, can't... Eh? Um... <laughs> Here we go. Wait. Come on. Oh, look. We'll just flag it, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Your, your voice recognition is what you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it great? Yeah, it was great when I, when I sort of started playing around with it when it came out in 2007, I think. It just saves you typing it all in and that. Yeah, it looks like it's really working for you. Can we have a chat after the show, Jess? When were we going to um, do something different from the love boat? Did we did we discuss that not long ago? Obviously not enough. No, no, I guess not. No. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't mind the love boat. I just um, I, I thought we made a decision to do something a bit different at the end. Well, I'll tell you what. On Throwback Thursday, was it? What's tomorrow? Throw it about Thursday, is it? Thirsty Thursday. No, Thirsty oh, Thursday, Thursday tomorrow. Yeah, we will guarantee we'll finish with a different different ditty. Okay? Sounds good, mate. Sounds good. Hey, listen, it's been a great show, and it's been great having your company uh, this afternoon, evening. Um, we've covered off a lot of topics, Lee Hart, and uh, we've had some great chat with people offline. We certainly have, and online, and, and online, off and on. Brilliant stuff, uh, Maddie. What's coming up in the night show, mate? Um, glad you asked. Biffy Clyro tickets. If you want oh, those, give, yeah. me, give me a text. 3483, double pass to Biffy Clyro next week. Just like that, easy as that. Can people start calling now if they wanted yeah. to do that? Yeah. Okay, well, we, that's yeah. good stuff. Are you going to stay behind because you were saying that you're going to stay behind with Matt and yes. just just watch him doing the show and get a bit of a feel for it? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a few notes, but I'll, if you don't mind, Matt, I'll stay back. No, not at all. With my stopwatch, pen, paper. You won't notice me. I'll be in the corner, just getting a vibe of your show, how you work, how you interact with your guests, your listeners, and maybe I'll catch up with Jace tomorrow. We'll do a couple of notes. And Are just... you going to share that bottle of Jumping Goat, or is that, is that just you? Oh, well, I, I would just want to see you without the Jumping Goat, how, how you perform. And yeah. um, maybe tomorrow we can try that. But I just want to get an idea. It's all very well sitting in my car or sitting at home listening to your show, which yeah, I, I've yeah, done yeah. once or twice. I but, know what you're saying. But I want to see it for real and just see where you're going wrong and where we might be able to tighten it up a little bit, keep those voice breaks a bit snappier, a bit tighter, hitting those marks and those outs a little this bit. This is coming up, we've got. Oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. I prefer up next. Coming up, we've got is a bit wordy. It's oh, about okay. hitting those outs. Hit those outs. Knowing where the out is. Up that's what you got to That's know. good, Maddie. That Do you use that, do you? Up next. Up next. Good Knowing stuff. where the out is. you got to just know where the out is on the stuff. Just know. Here at Radio Hodeki, we've been rewarding half ass New Zealanders with half a grand for over a year. You've won half a grand.